Lift your hands. <laughs> Father, we're so thankful for your presence. Where would we be without you? In your presence, there's fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you for everything that's on the menu today. <laughs> we just put our order in right now, Lord. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for provision. We thank you for everything that's on the menu. We thank you for direction. We thank you for fresh vision. We thank you for a blueprint from heaven. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for understanding. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything that heaven has for us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for favor. Favor with you and favor with man. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We expect the supernatural this morning. We expect everything that heaven has for us. In Jesus' name. And we expect anybody on a crooked path for you to jerk the slack out of it and make it straight in Jesus' name. That will only do what you tell us to do. We'll go where you want us to go. Do what you want us to do. Say what you want us to say. Be what you want us to be. Give what you want us to give. Not our will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Let our vision line up with eternity in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and there's a whole lot more on the menu other than that. But you know, the thing about a menu is you got to place an order. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who's placing an order? Well, then you'll receive. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. That was powerful. Wow. You know, I've heard pastors say this so many times. Everything you need is in his presence if you believe. Everything you need is in his anointing. It's in his presence. You have to step over out of, out of the veil of the flesh into the veil of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You need to step out over into the spirit and believe what God says. And you have to reach out and you have to grab it and you have to pull it in and know that it's now. Can you say amen? So everything you need is in His presence. It's in His anointing. Hallelujah. You know, in His anointing, what happens is the limitations go. The limitations that you've set go. And it's time to dream again. It's time to believe big again. Hello. It's true. Who's just getting in town? First meeting of the week? Welcome. Good to have you here. I'm not even going to talk about last night or anything. I'm just going to read, you know, so I'm not even going there. I'm sure I'll leave that to Pastor Rodney. Of course, I'll share just before he gets up. But, you know, I can just tell you from the 88 cities now, you guys see what's happening around the world. It's amazing. One night, Holy Ghost and fire meetings. There were over, you know, uh, 76,000 people showed up, show, showed up into local church meetings, which is really powerful. Over 26,000 people have answered the altar calls, and the, that's for salvation and rededication. And these are in churches. This is not stadiums. And then um, over 29, I believe it's 29,000 people have committed to win souls in their realm of influence and were trained, actually trained how to do it also. All of this happens in one night. So it's great, great fruit. Picture a stadium, a massive stadium of 75,000 people, you know, like at a massive, one of the biggest football stadiums. That's what these 88 churches have been, if you think about it. Picture an altar call coming down on the field of almost, you know, 27,000 people. I mean, that's what's happening, but it's all in a local church where the pastor and the leaders are going to make disciples and continue to grow the local church. Is that cool? I mean, that's really awesome. So it's great, great fruit, and you guys are all a big part of it. And we've seen super, supernatural things taking place, supernatural uh, provision. Just to be honest with you, there is no way that we can do what we do in those cities and, trans and, and, and do what we do based on a three-minute offering that comes in. <laughs> we do three-minute offering. You understand that. Three minutes. It's Pastor Rodney reading th like 
four scriptures on a video, and then I get up and we pass the envelopes. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a whole different concept than a week-long revival or breaking through in the night and stuff like that. But God comes through. Can you say amen? And God makes a way, and it's amazing what's happening. But I want you to open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 28, and I want you to get this in your spirit. I want you to get this in your spirit. You know, I will tell you, very rarely does Pastor Rodney ask me to share on something. He'll pretty much, if he calls us up, he pretty much... (laughs) <laughs> knowing that we just follow the Holy Ghost, do whatever the Holy Ghost says. But I can only count a few times I've actually heard him say, why don't you share from Matthew? Or why? I mean, he doesn't really do that. And so this morning he really felt you need to share from Deuteronomy 28. So I'm taking that, I'm taking that for you and I'm taking that for me and I want you to get this in your spirit. Amen? In the vision conference. And you know, one thing's for sure. When you have a vision from God and God puts a vision in your heart, then he's going to give you the provision to go with the vision. It has to happen. It has to happen. Hello. It has to happen on a Tuesday morning. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14. Father, I just pray for each and every person that they would have ears to hear and a heart to receive, that this word is for them right now, that you are speaking directly to them right now. And I pray that the limitations, the blockages, whatever is, has been hindering them, I bind it in the name of Jesus right now. And I thank you, Father, that each and every person will have ears to hear and a heart to receive. They would get fresh direction, fresh revelation from you. And they would get a revelation that as I share this, these, these, this scripture this morning, that this is a rhema word to them personally In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And it shall come to pass. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. That's it. It's phenomenal, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, Oh. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> oh, there it is right there. I mean, we're done. <laughs> Did it say maybe? Because I'm just checking because my, my, my Bible didn't say maybe. And it shall. Wow. See, that's me. That's you. It shall. For Ireland, it shall. For England, for America, it shall. For you, for your family. I better just read <laughs> And it shall come to pass. (laughs) Uh, If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, uh, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Uh. <coughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. Picked a great day to forget my handkerchief, honey. Give me a, give me a, give me a. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you know, give me the whole box. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Okay, here we go. (laughs) 
Oh, my goodness. This is... And all these blessings <laughs> shall come on thee and overtake thee. Wow. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and blessed shall... <laughs> they, thou be when you goest out. The Lord shall cause... The <laughs> Has anybody had any enemies come against you? I'm just curious. Because the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee seven ways. Hallelujah! <laughs> Verse 8. It's... And the Lord shall command. How many people know if the Lord commands something, it's over? I'm, I'm just letting you know. I mean, <laughs> and the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all thy settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Who's believing for land? He's going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord shall establish, th establish thee in a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee and thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. <sighs> and the Lord... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. In the fruit of thy body, I rebuke sickness and disease in Jesus' name right now. Rebuke it. And in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. <laughs> The heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. I'm a lender. Say that. I'm a lender. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Who's the head and not the tail? Absolutely. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. And if thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of these words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. And it shall. I mean, this is me now going back to verse 1. <laughs> and it shall come to pass. If you're not careful, your thoughts, the enemy, the world, situations, circumstances, people will all tell you none of this will come to pass. Hiccups in the road, things you go through will tell you none of this will happen in your life. And it's a total lie from the pit of hell. Faith counts it done without any proof in the natural. It shall come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You might be a borrower right now, but you're a lender. Hallelujah. Things are turning around. You got to get this in your spirit. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. And Pastor Ronnie always uses the example of going down the road and you're just cruising along and you're, not, you're just driving. And all of a sudden a big semi comes and passes you and you have to grab your wheel real hard because it shakes your car. Especially if you drive 
a van or something that's got a, a, a sidewall on it, if anybody's ever drove anything like that, you got a big truck that comes by you, you got to grab that wheel because it's almost like you're getting taken off the road. Who's ever had that happen? See, all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. That means they come from behind you. That means you're just driving along, you're looking ahead, doing what you need to do, and suddenly, boom, right behind you, you have to grab the wheel and say, what happened? And boom, it just overtakes you. That's the example he always gives. So you're about to be overtaken. The key is, is to do what God tells you to do, to get that vision in your heart. God doesn't put that vision in those dreams in your heart for it never, ever, ever to come to pass. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. Wow, I got a handkerchief. Thank you, baby doll. <laughs> They shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. And you have to get that in your spirit. You know, I'm reminded by so many things. And, you know, here we are at the 20th year of anniversary of Good News New York. And Pastor will tell you that the whole ministry, we don't use the word shift here. Everybody uses the word shift. But really a big transition happened in the ministry in 99 when he went to the garden. And for six weeks, rented Madison Square Gardens, and for six weeks, came against every devil in hell. Nobody would work with us. A lot of people don't even know a lot of the real story of everything. I mean, I can tell you, because I was on the grounds there. Um, we didn't run one television commercial or one radio commercial. Because we couldn't. Not because of money. It's because the people that owned them wouldn't run any of them. We were totally, totally you know, an outcast. I mean, if you want to say that they wouldn't run any of them. I don't care if you said, I'll give you 10,000 a spot. Didn't matter. There was no radio advertisement. There was no TV advertisement. Zero. We went to get the garden, you know, six weeks at Madison Square Garden. So I'm saying it shall come to pass. It doesn't matter who comes against you. Listen, when we went to the garden, the Lord said, gave Pastor Ronnie a dream said, go to New York, launch one of the biggest soul and crusades since the 50s. He got out of bed, put his feet on the ground. His pillow was soaking wet, and the Lord said, go, and he did it. He didn't have any money, didn't have millions of dollars in the bank, zero, just a word from God. That's vision. That's God telling you what to do. That's God giving you direction. He just went to the, he was in a church in Ozark, Alabama, went in there and was just saying, man, this is the craziest thing. I had a dream, man. This is weird. This is, well, listen, this is crazy. I had a dream and he told the dream and then the pastor, the pastor says, I'm going to give you $100,000. No pastor had ever in the history of ever in the ministry given Pastor Ronnie $100,000, a pastor. And pastor thought, he, did, he just thought, hmm. So he keeps on talking, and he goes, well, no, no, this is what happened in the dream. And then the pastor goes, well, I'm giving you $100,000. And Pastor Ronnie keeps on talking, and the pastor goes, I believe in what you're saying. I'm giving you $100,000. And I think that week, $300,000 came in. No offering, please pray about New York, pass the bucket, zero. No, no offering. Three hundred grand came in. Then all of a sudden, flap, 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 provision started to come in. We didn't eat, he didn't even have the garden booked. There was no Madison Square Garden. It was just some going to New York. That's all it was. You see that in vision. You see God gives you direction. God tells you what to do, and then the provision comes in. And then we call the garden. We couldn't get the garden. They said maybe three days. Nobody has ever had the garden ever in the history of the garden ever for what you're asking for. And Pastor Ronnie said, no, you don't know. Dr. Billy Graham was here in the 50s. He ran a revival for eight weeks. 55, 57,000 people, I think, got saved during that revival. And they said, we didn't know that. And then so we said, this is a true story. This is a fact. We said, God needs the garden. It's true. It's a secular person, not some believer running the place. The phone goes silent for 15 minutes. The guy comes back and says, we've cleared the entire schedule, including the women's all-star basketball game. You have it. And we didn't even give him a penny. Hallelujah, not even a penny. See, you don't need money when you have favor. Now, we did pay, but at that point, it was favor. I mean, I don't care if you'd have put $10 million down. It's still, they got games. They got stuff going on. I mean, they're big, big business here. Favor is not fair. 
to the unbeliever, but to the believer, it's fair. Favor has a flavor. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. When God puts favor on your life, as Pastor Rodney says, people say, absolutely, yes. Yes. They don't even know what they say. Favor. Favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So favor, that was favor, and that was direction, and that was timing, and that was God. I mean, that's the bottom line. Oh, by the way, it shall come to pass. Yes. (laughs) And it did. And so what happened is we had to put a million dollars down by January 8th, 1999, which we did not have. We, of course, had 300 grand now, I mean, because the money's coming in. And then flap, 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 supernaturally, money started coming in from all over the place, God was waking people up at night and giving them dreams, and they were sending 100000 I mean, anybody knows anything about the ministry, it doesn't normally work that way. It's the widow's might that funds everything. It's everybody doing their part where they're at is how it works, just so everybody knows. Most people that have the big bucks keep the big bucks in their own foundation and all this other stuff. So it's, it's the widow's might that funds the ministry. Hello. And But all of a sudden, pastors, leaders, people around the world were sending all this money in. And then we got up to, I think it was, uh, you know, just we needed, it was January 8th, we needed to send a million-dollar check to Madison Square Gardens. And we still needed, I, th- I think at that time, uh, we, we still needed um, four or $500,000. We had sent 200000 We needed 800000 And we were, I think, four or 500000 short with one week to go. Hallelujah. And so I made one of the biggest mistakes. Me and Jennifer and I were, uh, this is 99, so we came to Bible school charter class in 97, got hired in 98 after one year of Bible school. So we're on the road one year, okay? Like one year in the ministry, right? And, um, you know, we just came out of business and stuff. So pastor needs like $500,000 like in a week, right? And I mean, he's, he didn't act like anything was wrong. He was not even like rubbing his hands together or anything. And I'm thinking, Jesus, I mean, we need 500, Jesus help. We need 500, I mean, where's this money going to come? I mean, I'm just, you know, but I'm not. And then, so we're right, we're flying on a plane to West Palm beach. And I thought I had this great business idea to get 500 grand in a week, you know? Oh my goodness. It went bad real fast. I said, Pastor, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, I mean, just, you know, just, just knew, you know. And I come up with this whole plan that he could get 500 grand in a week. Man, he rebuked me hard, man. I mean, the anointing came on him. He goes, absolutely not. I mean, he goes, either God spoke to me or God didn't speak to me. If God didn't speak to me, then I'm not going to do it. But God spoke to me. That money's going to come in. I shut it. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, I'm like, feel like the lowest of the low. And I'm thinking, shut up. I mean, you should know this by now. Two ears, one mouth. Shut up. But I was... I mean, not that anybody else in here stepped over in the natural, tried to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so I removed my foot from my mouth. And then what happened, we get there, pastor preaches in West Palm with a week to go, and new church just starting on a Monday night. And the offering that night was $8,000 in a brand new startup church. That's a phenomenal offering. So the guy gives Pastor Rodney the check, $8,000. Pastor Rodney immediately takes a check and says, this irritates me. Hold on, to hear the rest of it. He turns the check over, signs the back, and hands it to the pastor. He says, this is your check. And the pastor goes, you, what do you mean? You got the garden. You need 800 grand. And, and uh, you know, he goes, you need this. He goes, no, I don't need 8,000. I need 800,000. This irritates me. And what he meant was, this is not enough to meet the need. It must be seed, like he always says. So he took the $8,000 and handed it right back to the pastor. Isn't that powerful? In that week, Pastor Rodney went back to his house, didn't book any meetings, didn't send any appeals out, didn't do anything, and just got in his house. And all he did was praise God and thank him. 
And he sang those songs that are on the Nothing Is Impossible album, David, uh, I mean, not Nothing to Pop, the David Ingalls, the tribute to David Ingalls album that we have, You're Such a Good God to Me. And all he did was sing those songs, and he called the office, and he said, every time a raven lands, call me. Flap, 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 the ravens are coming. You know, the ravens fed the prophet. Soup, you know, bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. Supernatural provision from unexpected sources of supply. So he goes, whenever a raven lands, just call me. I'm not doing nothing but praising God. And all he did was get in his room, in his house, and praise God. Next thing you know, a pastor calls and says, listen, I couldn't sleep. The Lord told me to send 100000 Another man goes, I was digging in my backyard. This is a businessman. He goes, I was digging in my backyard, and I found a, a box of gold. Three, and it wasn't re- this is This is a real thing that happened, but his humor. He goes, I was digging in my backyard. Backyard, I found a box of uh, treasure, and I'm sending you 300,000. He really did give the 300,000, but that was the way he joked. So there's 300, there's 400. People started sending stuff in from all over the world. Now, in 99, we weren't sending mass emails and texts and give mobile giving and you know, all of this stuff. Flap, flap, flap. And on January 7th, the money was due January 8th. Pastor Rodney said to me, come on, Eric, we're going to the bank. And I went with Dr. Rodney to Bank of America, and we got a check, a cashier's check for 800000 and overnighted it for the garden. It shall come to pass. <laughs> Hallelujah! 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 Now that needs to encourage you that, that whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. God is going to come through for you. God is true. His word is true. And amen. Hallelujah! And then the rest is history. July 30th, 1999, now looking back 20 years, he preached the message, a storm is coming. There's a rise of terrorism coming to the United States. This is two years before 9-11. Rise of terrorism is coming to the United States. America's not ready for what's coming. He said, I tell you the truth, the blood will run in the streets. If you don't know why, that's why this meeting is here. What would happen if a missile struck New York City? This is at the Garden in Manhattan, Two years before 9-11. So prophesied 9-11. And that's why the Lord had him go on that assignment. As crazy it was. With no, with every, I mean, one church wrote one million letters and sent them out to everybody. One mega church told them not to get involved with the crusade. We had such opposition. It was the most horrific thing you've ever seen. Thank God for the Spanish church, glory a Dios, because the Spanish church was the church that got behind it. We started having a Thursday night Spanish night, and the only and then we were on Spanish radio. So the Spanish, the the Fuego de Dios, the, the Fuego, the Fire of God Spanish church came on board and really helped. And uh, hallelujah! It's so no advertising. So we started, and, and I'm closing with this. We came up with an idea. And that's why there's a key to everything. And what do you do when you have no radio? You have no TV at that time. There was no Facebook boost and all, at least if there were, we didn't know. No, 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 it didn't exist. Okay, so none of that. So we came up with an idea to print a ticket that looked just like Madison Square Garden's ticket. I mean, just like if you went to a basketball game or a football, you know, a football basketball game. And it was the exact ticket that you would get if you paid to go to an event at the, at the garden. And it said free ticket entry, you know, for entry. And it was a Madison Square Garden's free ticket. Even to take a tour of the garden, it's $20. I mean, even at that time, it was $20 just if you were a tourist who wanted to see the garden, just to walk in an empty shell. So it had value to it. Then we started a program called Operation Awareness. And I know my wife was over that. Operation Awareness was the only way we could get the word out was to hand these tickets out. We handed out 12 million tickets. 12 million tickets in eight languages. All across the corners of New York, every church, everything. We were getting people boxes. Every volunteer that came in, we would give them a box. We'd give them at the subway stations, everything. Hey, this is a free ticket to the garden. What? A free ticket? Yeah, we're giving away free tickets. you got to come. And that was the advertising campaign for Madison Square Gardens, was 12 million free tickets. When everybody else, when everybody else blocks you one way, God has another way to get it done. Can you say amen? So who cares who's against you? Who cares who doesn't believe in what God's told you to do? 
Bless God, it shall come to pass. You just floor it. You just floor it and keep going. And when you get up to the Red Sea and the armies of the devil are behind you, just bless God, step on it, and the water's going to part from the left to the right. Hallelujah. When Goliath's coming against you, bless God, you charge him and say, I come in the name of the Lord, and it shall come to pass. Whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. If you put your hand to something, it is over. You understand that. If you put your hand to it, it shall prosper. Hallelujah. And God is, gonna, God is coming through for you, and it shall come to pass. But do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. Someone said, hello, due season. <laughs> That's my humor. I'm sorry. I just, you know, the Bible says this stuff. I say, well, this is due season right now. I mean, I, I know it's his season, but for me, it's due season right now because faith, it's due season right now. Amen. Hallelujah. So, oh my, it shall come to pass. Isn't that amazing? $6.7 million that it ended up costing, 48,459 decisions for Christ. Amen? 250,000 tons of food went into the five boroughs. Massive evangelism. Did you know we were, had offices on Wall Street? Now, this is a 20-year anniversary coming up, July 7th. July 7th is 20 years. Guess what day Good News New York starts? July 7th, exactly 20 years later in New York. And uh, 250,000 tons of food went in. We hit all five boroughs and Long Island and New Jersey, but all five boroughs, okay? And uh, 48,459 decisions. And that's where the gospel soul winning script came from because we had a little manual on the road. It was like a quarter of an inch thick. Try to start, walk up to a New Yorker getting off a subway with a manual. Didn't work too good, trust me, okay? Didn't work too good. And so actually my wife was crying out to the Lord because she was over the soul winning. And she's like, Lord, we had 120 people. We had six people saved. Wasn't good numbers, you know? And so she cried out to the Lord, Lord, we have to win souls. What do, I, what do we do? What do I do? And he downloaded the gospel soul in a scripture card. Scripture short for scripture because it's got scripture in it, just so in case anybody doesn't know. Gospel script, the gospel scripture card. She typed it up four to a piece of paper on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, front and back, took it to Kinko's, and then we cut it in fours in regular piece of paper, went back to the class the next day and said, I don't know. The Lord just gave us this. Try this. And just in a few days, in one day with 120 people, we led 3,000 people in one day to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's Book of Acts. 120 in the upper room, 3,000 saved. So out of that whole time, a lot of things happened with the ministry. A lot of, you know, taking the anointing outside the four walls where Pastor Ronnie would always do altar calls, and he always still does. But your anointing for the assignment that you have outside the four walls of the church, whether you're a pastor, a business person, a, 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 fam, a, you know, a housewife, um, working a regular job, doesn't matter. You have an anointing and an assignment on you to make a difference outside the four walls of the church. And then for, for those in business or those that want to be in business, if you remember the Lord thy God, it is he that gives you the power or the anointing or the ability to create wealth to establish his covenant, there is an anointing to create wealth. Amen. For the sole purpose of getting behind ministries that are advancing the kingdom of God. And yes, having all the other stuff that you want, that's, that's the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. So the kingdom first, his righteous kingdom and his righteousness, things are on the backside, not the front side. And if you get that backwards, you miss the whole thing. So you can have houses, cars, and all those things. There's nothing wrong with having a vacation home or a nice home, car or cars. Absolutely not. It just can't be the first thing. It's got to be the last thing. It's got to be the thing at the back end. But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall come to you. Oh, by the way, it shall come to pass. Jesus, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Get that in your spirit. <laughs> it shall come to pass in New Jersey. Come on. Hallelujah. So like Pastor Rodney with that $8,000 check. I mean, I learned a lot. I'm just brand new in the ministry at that time. Just excited, you know, to do what we do. And man, I, 
I mean, I had no idea how something like this would happen. I mean, I, and now being in the ministry 22 years later, I can tell you, and I can tell you, you can just learn from this. We have never had the money to do anything in the bank that God has ever called us to do that was big that I can ever remember me being a guy on the side here for 22 years. I can never remember ever having the finances one time to do it. Now, I know that breaks all the rules of budget and, 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 and your P&L statements and all that, but never once I can remember ever having the money. But it all, in every single one of them, came to pass. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And God is no respecter of persons. If he does it for Pastor Rodney, this ministry is going to do it for you. Even on a personal note, personal note, business, ministry, everything, God is going to come through. Bless God, if you put your hand to it, it has no other choice but to prosper. I mean, no other choice. And any other words that come out of your mouth, you need to rebuke thyself. Hallelujah. So we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed. I'll tell you, the Lord, the power coming, jeez, that's powerful. Who needed to hear that today? Who's going to meditate on Deuteronomy 28 and know that that's for you? And it is for you. It is ours. Absolutely. And just like Pastor Rodney with that check of $8,000, I mean, he said it irritates me. I mean, he, he, you know, obviously he, that's his humor. I mean, imagine the pastor sitting there thinking, well, maybe you should have, should have made it out for more. You know, I mean, no, it was, he, at least he didn't hesitate like I did when I told the story. It was a whole flow. So this irritates me. I don't need, okay, so he didn't, he didn't stop there. You know, I don't need 8,000. I need 800,000. If it's not enough to meet the need, it must be seed. And he put it in the offering. Hallelujah. And then the rest is history. And a lot of times that's the way the Lord works, is it's us stepping out in faith like that. So ask the Lord what he'd have you do. Do what the Lord tells you to do. And I'm here to tell you, it shall come to pass. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Ushers, hand out the offering envelopes. (laughs) Here's the key. Ask the Lord what he'd have you do. You know, there's a lot of people that even backed off in the area of giving because maybe you didn't see what you thought you should see. You need to double it. You need to crank it up. You need to do what God's telling you to do. You need to let, you need to pray for the gift of faith to come on you. Come on. Make your checks out to RMI. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And do what he tells you to do. Lord could be speaking to someone about doing something substantial. Hallelujah. Someone, the Lord could be talking to you about doing a breakthrough offering, something that you need You know, a breakthrough offering is something that breaks you through, not breaks God through. Hallelujah. A breakthrough is when you break something. A breakthrough offering is when you break something that you feel. That's a breakthrough offering. It's not God. God always does His part. Hallelujah. Give an offering that will cause you to break through. Hallelujah. You can't buy a blessing from God, but it comes from the heart. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what he's telling you to do. Make your checks out to RMI this Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday morning. It's the it shall come to pass Tuesday morning. Amen. You can also give by credit card. Those facilities are available. Give electronically. You can also give through your cell phone, through mobile giving, mobile banking. You can take your cell phone, as you can see on the screen, text 77977, give RMI, no spaces. And for those watching right now, and you know, I feel quickened to do this. If you're watching right now, so many people watch, and we're so glad we have this technology to come into your home, but it doesn't mean that you're not here. You're a part of the service. You're receiving in your house. You probably said amen five times, or hopefully you did, which means so be it, or it shall come to pass. Then be a part right now. Sow a generous seed. Yeah, you're going to have to go to another screen. Go to revival.com, click invest now do that, take your cell phone out, go 77977, then write, give RMI, no spaces, hit send. If you're watching right now and you're being blessed right here during Vision 1-9, then do that right now. Just don't be someone that watches all the time and doesn't do anything. Do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it right now. That's what we're doing. Why don't you do that? Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else need an envelope? Raise your hand. We'll get it to you. 
Hallelujah. Just raise your hand. We'll get you an offering envelope if you need one. If you want one of the building funds or the Jubilees, you can raise your hand. I know people from the church here and people that, that watch online all the time. Some people might be a part of Jubilee. Raise your hand on that. We'll get you one of those if you want one of those. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once, anybody else need an envelope? Hallelujah. Who believes it's going to come to pass? Who believes God honors his word? Hallelujah. Brother Edwin's going to come and bless us. And let me just look around, see if everybody, you need any more time, say, wait. Okay, a few people still writing. Father, we just thank you. Your word is true. Lord, we can depend on you. We can depend on your word. Even though the wind and the waves would come and tell us different. Father, we leave fear in the boat and we step out on the water. We leave fear in the boat and we step out on the water and we do what you've told us to do. Father, we thank you that these blessings are coming and they're overtaking us. We thank you, Lord, that whatever we put our hand to shall prosper. We thank you, Lord, that we are lenders and not borrowers. We thank you, Lord, that every bit of debt that we have is supernaturally paid in full. Lord, we trust you for big things. We thank you we're lenders and we're not borrowers. In Jesus' name. And we expect supernatural provision. We expect to be in the right place at the right time. We expect supernatural direction from heaven. And we thank you it's done. We thank you it's done. We thank you it's done. And it has come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody says, <laughs> amen.